Hello everyone, I welcome you all to the third day editorial of our mobile development challenge. The challenge states that just like you filled a form in the last task, 25 other people did too. So we should have some kind of page uh, which would display data of all 25 peoples. Right? So let me show, first search this reference here. This is the Figma link. So like uh, all the these are all the people registered with the uh, with us here uh, and uh, we can see their data in form of tiles and these tiles is scrollable these tiles are scrollable okay so let's design this uh, before designing let's analyze this first so yeah these tiles will have a uh, container in container there will this will be have having a profile picture on the left side and these all details on the right side it is said that uh, we should take the dummy data of 25 people. For generating dummy data, I asked ChatGPT to give me a dummy data and it gave me four arrays, names, emails, ages, and date of birth, and mobile numbers. So using this, I'll uh, display uh, these data here, name, mobile number, email ID, date of birth. Uh, there was one more, I guess, uh, age. Instead of agenda, we'll be having age. So uh, this is the data we are going to work with. So let's get started right away. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is the uh, stuff we designed in the day two. Like we designed a sign up page, but uh, today we don't want a sign up page. We want a user list page. So first let's make that page. So the page name will be user list dot that. And Let's have a stateful widget. Uh, we'll see why we want a stateful widget and then uh, we'll name it user I guess my caps lock is on user list. Yeah. Sorry, the class name cannot be starting with a small name it does against it goes against the standards of flutter so this will be our very little page and what uh, we need to first make a scaffold here as always so let's make a scaffold we give it a small app bar and we have this app bar here we give it a title the title will have the name like user list okay sorry title takes a text widget uh, text user list let's uh, give the background color as a color score blue okay and to complement this blue color we should make this text white so it looks better so we'll give it a style a textile color color score white so after making this Let's call this. Uh, let's call this page here in the main dot dot instead of sign up page. And see, we got our page here. So yeah, initial setup of making the user list page is done. This is our user list page. Let's design the container which will be displaying in form of a list. So let's start designing our containers which would house these data of users. So in our user list page. We will make a body and the body will have a widget oh, okay so what we are trying to do here is we are trying to create a list of data so we will have something like this 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 right so it will have a list and it list can have values as much as we want to provide in an array right by default we are taking the default values as 10 here which I asked from chat GPT but you can have any values so we can do this much with uh, using column also but like putting all like what if we have thousand data putting all thousand data in a column is not feasible right it will be huge constraint on memory and it will your app will hang a lot so we have another widget to display a list view and that's exactly what is called a list view the list view here it it has uh, like four functions it, it is basically 
used to make uh, you know display list of objects or list of widgets inside it so uh, most famous one is this piece of builder so what builder does is it displays the items in real time like even if you give it a thousand data now it will only show these four data and it will not make other four datas unless you scroll on to them once you reach those data it will then create them so it is a very efficient in memory and it saves a lot of space and your app runs very smoothly so that's why we use a list views or builder so by default this takes an item builder so we will definitely need an item builder so that we can create a widget in real time while user is scrolling so if we are creating a widget in real time we need to have a you can see a build context in it because anything in flutter is created with a, within a context and an index in it the uh, you know the location or an in index of the widget which is being created so let's give it a context and let's give it an index and now each time we can just return a widget here let's return a text widget the text and yeah text and then we can just do sorry you can just do uh, index or two string now you can see it 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 keeps on going it keeps on going but it is not uh, going like uh, you know it is not creating this widget uh, you know beforehand it's creating in real time as soon as i scroll it from here it will then create this widgets and paste it here so that it is very efficient in memory so why is it not stopping because we haven't given it in, give it a count so as soon as i give it here an item count the count of how many items you want to see uh, it would stop you see sorry uh, there was an error so yeah it stopped at 10 0 0 to 9 so that's how we can display a list here but we don't want to display text we want to display a list of containers uh, we show that in our figma okay i close that window but uh, yeah we want to display our containers like this so let's design those containers first of all let's create a container uh, let's make a, let's give the width of the media query that size dot width and then let's give it a height of height of 150 okay so it will uh, you know display 10 containers with this height and while we are at it let's uh, give it a padding of 10 so that the containers are not uh, stick to uh, stuck to one another but they are have a uh, sufficient space in between them so that the user can see them properly okay let we have given it a padding why is giving error yeah that's why Mm -hmm. There is one more this missing or what? No. Yeah, it's fine. So right now you cannot see that because these containers don't have a color. Let me give it a color and show you that uh, yeah, these containers are in fact there. Yeah, my system is hanging a lot. So yeah, you can see that this, even though these containers are not containers are not visible, they are there. Uh, after I give it a color, or you can see there there are containers. Let's give it a border radius too. Mm. There we give it border radius. We give it a decoration, a type of box decoration, and uh, let's remove this color. Uh, then we will give it a border radius border radius dot all border radius is circular okay. so I am if you give it a color also you can see we have these containers ready but next thing I want to do is give these containers a shadow now what is a shadow so like shadow is something whenever you see an app and it has a UI which has some boxes and all it will have the shadow here like it it will have a shadow like effect and if you are familiar with css you already know that these shadows make these containers appear elevated and it looks appealing to the users 
so let's have a shadow let's remove this color uh, we'll keep it as colors dot white because we want a white color even if you don't give it it'll be fine so now let's give it a shadow so by default box shadow takes an array of shadows sorry so by default box shadow takes an array of shadow so let's uh, give it only one box shadow okay and shadows color will be colors dot gray and if you paste it up okay okay if we paste it up you can see it's slightly visible you can see uh, it's slightly visible but we want it to be more uh, nicely visible so these box shadow have different properties we can offset this shadow by de by default the shadow is completely overlapping our container but we offset this shadow by some margin we'll be able to see them clearly so let's offset this we'll offset uh, for offsetting this we'll give it an offset offset not zero uh, but rather an offset of uh, zero in x direction but three in y direction you see you can see my shadow a little bit and now let's give it a blur radius of so that the shadow get blurred of five let's give it a 10 you see uh, now our shadow is completely visible but it's a little bit darker we don't want it to be this dark so let's give it an opacity of 0 0.5 remove this okay so now you can see our shadows are clearly visible and uh, they look good also so now that we have our dummy containers ready we need to put data in it and for doing the data thing we'll uh, get the data which we are got from chat gpt so let's copy this whole code and paste it here we'll make another folder because anything that are constants will be stored in a constant folder let's create a folder called constants and here add a new folder called data constants uh, hold many different uh, you know constant stuff like api keys and all so yeah we can store some our dummy data here also and here we'll make a file as dummy data dot dot and paste it here so these things as void main uh, we don't want void main we want to keep this data in a separate class so we can access them so let's give it a class called class uh, dummy data so now when i want to use this data i'll have to create an object of dummy data like this dummy data dot and now i can access these things not here obviously because it's the same file but if i want to somewhat say like use it here so i can just use this then i want to create an object then i'll be able to use it but i did don't want to do that i don't want to create an object of dummy data i want to access them without creating object because these data will never change so why so i can just create a static now static variables i will create these variables as static so the property of static variable is they are uh, you know created only uh, at the time of assignation assigning and they don't ever change there will always be one static variable throughout the whole class so let's give it all a type of static okay now i have the state uh, these data are static and then i can use them here also if i want them so now i have my data so uh, i can just use it inside my container and then start using it now let's design the inside of our container this is our container so let's give it a child and child will have a row so far we have been using columns which are having alignment like this this and this but will we use a row which have you know which has fashioned a row manner it's self-explanatory explanatory row but yeah so now this has a row so row will also have a list of children and in here i can display just about anything first of all uh, i want this thing here so let's create this so flutter has a special class for it it's called circle avatar 
inside circle avatar i can give it a widget also let's remove this const no you can see it has many different things but first of all it has a child widget child so on we can also provide a background image so instead of using child just to let's just use background image background image uh sorry not color we want to use image it will and we can give it uh, different kinds of image like asset image images which are present here a memory images uh some images have their you know byte array with us we can just convert as using a uh, memory image but we want a network image we will fetch a net, uh, image from network so we'll give it a network image and the url will be uh, i'll show your site it's called pixum so pixum basically pixum images pixum basically uh, you know if you copy this it will uh, generate a random image every time you want to see it so you can just copy it and use it so you will just give it here we'll paste it and you know we will just see our images it's rather small so we don't want it that small so let's give it a radius of 45 okay our 45 is also too big let's give it a radius of 40 and just we want it to be a little bit uh, you know have some space from the left so let's we can give it a padding also but let's give it a size box of width 10 so just an empty size box so that uh, we don't have to give it a padding now our image is completely ready we want a divider here that indicates that uh, you know, uh, something else uh, it, it looks good basically something like a divider so for doing that we'll uh, show a vertical divider so vertical divider will have many different things you can see width thickness indent and indent color it will just give it a color of colors dot gray and we'll give it a width of one so now you can see we have a vertical divider we'll also give it an opacity because it's looks too striking 0 0.5 0 Now let's give it a space here also so that this divider looks good. We could have done that the same thing with the padding also, but I will want to show you another way of giving spacing between objects. If you are giving padding to some objects, if the padding cannot be, you know, it is not compressible. Like uh, it will definitely throw some error called uh, overflow errors. So sometimes I use size box to give spacing so that it look okay. So now I have a divider and everything. Now just we just want our data here, 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 here. So of course we want a data like this, 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 this. So we'll use a column here. So see, we have first created a row and we are creating a column inside this row here. So you, you can keep nesting columns and rows inside, inside as long as as much as we want. So after this vertical divider, let's create a column. Column will also have a list of children. Now these children will have text widget here. And text widget will say name. First of all, let's see how it is looking. Yeah, name. And we'll have four of these text widget with us. Because five, sorry, five of these text widgets with us because we want to display five stuff. So now, by default, this text widget is, uh, you know, from uh, starting from here, and it is stuck to the upper side of it. So we want to change this alignment. We want to bring these things to the center, like this. So for doing that, we'll change the main axis alignment of the column. So I explained to you what is the main axis. Uh, the columns uh, are, uh, you know, laid out in this fashion. So this is its main axis. Uh, the columns are made out in this fashion so this is the main axis because elements are arranged in the column in this way only and the other axis is cross axis which is perpendicular to the main axis so we can just give 
main axis alignment dot center i think that will see something is wrong with it what is the error fonts somewhere fonts to change is doing what no no main axis alignment yeah so now you see this uh, this uh, definitely fit inside center and let's give it a padding also padding of like 10 uh here i want we'll give padding later on because sometime there is a limit to how much space we can assign because bringing lighting uh, you know uh, data here also will take space so name email then we have our you know date of birth then we have our age and we have uh, the last thing was let's see in the dummy data name emails ages date of birth mobile numbers phone we will just say phone now this is ready you see uh, as soon as i gave uh, these different uh, names they are starting uh, arranging themselves in center uh, if i give something like this you can see it will arrange itself in the center right we don't want that we want them to be aligned on the left side and i told you by default the columns are you know center aligned you see cross axis alignment is center so this was the main axis so this is definitely the cross axis we'll change that we'll say cross axis alignment as center so now it will be nicely aligned here and we'll give it a size box of let's say 5 here we don't want to give too much space to the spaces so now no no we don't want it center we want it to start cross axis alignment at start you see now these are perfectly aligned at the start of the line and we can fill our data here so how do we fill our data uh, for name we can just give it like uh, you know like this and we can just create plus and we already have index right we are getting index from our list builder builder here we can use that index and we'll say like uh, dummy data dot we don't want to create an object because we already declared these fields as static and we will just do this index and it will be fine you can see all these will have different names but the problem here is what if we want to delete these entries and as we'll face in the subsequent challenges we can uh, if you want to delete this and you have selected uh, you know data from different arrays you want to you'll have to go and uh, delete those different arrays also so we don't want this these we don't want data to be decoupled this many times we want the data to be together in some place so for doing that uh, we'll have to you know create a class that will hold all these data in one single place a class will have uh, these four five fields and it will hold all the data uh, with it so for doing that uh, let's create a new folder we'll call it mm, models models will have uh, diff models are basically default data structure no, not data structure but data and i'll show you how a model look like we'll give it a name user model dot dart so basically i want is I want all of these dummy data in form uh, in one class for one user. So we can just say I have a class name as user, and user has this following data inside of it. User has a string, a name, and let's say const string name. No, sorry, final string name. And it will have these. Uh, sorry. And it will have email. It will have you know phone. It will have date of birth, and it will have age. So now we have created uh, these number variables. So we need to create constructor. So we can just create, do that. You click in here also. Uh, no, no, it's not giving me idea. 
it will create here create constructor for the final fields and you know it create created constructors i didn't want to create a constructor like this basically want a constructor where uh, i can just see the names of it if you create a constructor like this we we'll won't know uh, we would have to follow the specific order to send data here i'll have to put name first then email then phone then date of birth then age this can sometimes turns hectic so i don't want this here i'll just create a constructor like this required this dot name you see and everything would work the same way i'll have to do this five times And just change this name. This is email. This is your phone. This is your DOB. This is your then age. Now, when I'll have to put data here, I'll just say data user. And inside the user, give uh, give data age as some age. So now we can uh, to specifically see what values we are providing to the object. So now our object is created. Let's use this object to hold our, all our dummy data, not the you know arrays, different arrays. How can we do that? We'll have to use the init state, and we'll have to put uh, run a for loop and uh, put all the data in form of classes. So first, let's create a class. In this class will be of type this model. So we'll just say user. then user list okay user list and for now it is empty so you can see like if we create a tall array of list it is called a list of string now we want all the list uh, here to be of user type so we are uh, declaring its type as user because uh, will that's what we'll be putting inside this array so now inside our init state Let's run a for loop for var i is equal to zero, i is less than ten, and i plus plus. And what will we, what we will do is just we'll just put user list dot add will add the elements into this array, and we'll call it. First, we want to give it a name. Ah, uh, it will be of type user. The object will be of type user. And you can see now we can see all the data will which are which we are providing. If we had not make it uh, in these curly brackets, no, we won't be able to provide this data using the name. We'll have to follow a specific order. So now we can just give it a data, uh, you know, name as dummy data dot names dot c uh, dot i. Let's just do this for all of the data. so you can see i have uh, you know uh, written it already uh, for name we'll using dummy data dot names for email we'll be using dummy data dot emails and uh, our array will be created so now you can see that uh, by use uh, first how we created a data first we created a dummy data in a class and we declared all the variables here as statics so we can use them without instant uh, instantiating them now uh, we created a class called user it will hold all the data together so it is not in five different arrays but it is in one place so that we can manipulate it however we want now you can see i ran a for loop in the user list we created we added created a fresh new variable user we put all the data from dummy data arrays and we put inside the user and now our user list is ready for use so let's use it instead of doing dummy data dot names dot index we can just see user list dot name user list dot index dot name and we can do this for all of these guys let's change this to email Let's change this to DOB. Let's change this to age. Let's change this to phone. 
Now you'll be wondering why these blue lines are appearing here. That's because uh, this is not a good way to write a string here. Uh, Dart already has a, a way for using string interpolation. You can just say convert with uh, string interpolation. And we'll you can see that this is the correct way of using interpolation. Sorry. This is the correct way of using this interpolation. This dollar here indicates that uh, these uh, the value inside this curly braces are the values which can change over time. So that's the uh, you know, correct way of doing this. You can see all our data are appearing. They are appearing very nicely. Let's save it one more time. The Pixum, Pixum guys are not being loaded properly. They'll refresh the page and they will be there. The Pixum by default sends some errors sometimes. Okay, let's leave the Pixum. But yeah, Pixum will appear. Uh, sometimes the error, there is error with their network. You, you can use any other you know, image here. Let's search uh, placeholder image. Placeholder. Oh, sorry. I don't have an interconne internet connection. That's why it's not able to fetch these data. So yeah, this was the editorial of today. And yeah, that's how you create a list. In the subsequent uh, you know, assignments, you will see how to delete these lists, how to uh, search these lists and everything. So I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.